Deadliest Animals on the Planet from National Geographic Kids contains entertaining bite-sized information about fierce creatures on land and sea. It's also filled with spectacular photographs of dangerous animals, large and small. And some might surprise you. For example, did you know that cows harm more people than sharks? Hi, I'm Dan Skinner. Welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Ahead, we'll explore the book and I'll talk with the author. I requested and was provided with a copy of the book, but this video is not sponsored. Jennifer Szymanski is a freelance science writer and editor whose mission is to help students connect science to everyday life. She served as the author and researcher for Deadliest Animals on the Planet from National Geographic Kids and joins us to talk about it. Jennifer, welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, before we talk about some specific dangerous animals in this book, give us a quick overview. What are readers going to find here? So this book um, is going to encompass all sorts of animals. We deliberately chose animals of all different sorts, insects and reptiles, amphibians, mammals. Um, and we expanded the definition of deadly. So while readers are going to find lions and tigers and you know all bears with big claws and sharks, um, they're also going to find mosquitoes, um, very small frogs that live in uh, tropical areas, things that we may not necessarily consider deadly when we hear that word. But in fact, they really are. <laughs> they are. They absolutely are. And in this book, of course, as you would expect with a National Geographic book, it's filled with wonderful photographs. Absolutely. I was so fortunate to have an amazing team. I, I couldn't begin to th think what kind of challenge it would be to go through a National Geographic photo archive to find pictures to match the text. Um, and they did. And they did an amazing job. The photos are just wonderful. They tell the story completely. And for what age group would you recommend the book? This is aimed for about 7 through 12, ages 7 through 12. Although, um, you know, I, th I think as a kid, when I was a kid, I was so photo drawn that I liked to just look at the pictures. So, you know, definitely a little leeway on either end. So give us a sample here. Tell us about some of the creatures that are included in this book. So I would say that uh, some of my favorites um, that there are things that I learned while I was doing research for this book. Um, every time I do a project for National Geographic, I learn either of an existence of an animal that I had never known before or something about an animal that uh, with which I was already familiar. In this case, my favorite one was actually the Shrike which is a small, very handsome looking little bird. I, I grew up with family that birded. So, um, and the shrike, when it goes out, it hunts. And if it finds something and it's not quite ready for its meal yet, it will impale that prey on a thorn, on a branch. And to me, to see this, like I said, handsome little gray and black and white bird impaling <laughs> things seemed something like it was, should have been an animal horror movie. Um, so that was fascinating for me. Now, as you pointed out, you cover a wide range of creatures from insects to those very large animals that you would expect. So I just, I'm curious about the range here in terms of size, because they come in all shapes and sizes. What are some of the largest dangerous creatures in this book? So one of the ways that we defined deadly is how much destruction, how many other animals do they kill, for lack of a better word, on each hunt? And in that case, you have the largest animal in the world that has ever lived, to our knowledge, the blue whale. And it eats such a small animal, the krill, and it will eat millions of those in one gulp. So we considered that one to be quite deadly, at least, at least if you're a krill, and that's definitely the largest animal. 
As far as on the small side, um, I always think that the deadliest um, after humans, the deadliest animal in existence is the mosquito because of all of the work it's done spreading malaria uh, throughout human civilization. And I, I, the number eludes me, but I, I know that some scientists suspect billions of people have died because of mosquitoes. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely deadly. And there are some in here that might surprise people. For example, cows. I didn't think of cows as being deadly. Right. Um, the, the fact that we focused on for that particular feature was that more people are killed by cows every year than sharks. When that's true, it's about 20 for cows and it's about five or six for sharks. It's just the sharks get all the press. <laughs> um, and part of the reason for that is that we don't have proximity to sharks the way that so many humans have proximity to cows. That's a domesticated animal. We may have some in our backyard. Um, they also, because they're domesticated, we tend to not be as quite as afraid to watch out for them, but it's still a 1500 pound animal with horns. And if it is injured or not feeling well and you approach it, it's going to use that to its defense for sure. Or if it just falls on you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It, it's not going to work out well for you. Uh, yeah. One of the things I, I noticed, and you were talking about that earlier with a uh, bird, the strike, mm -hmm. uh, which is an attractive bird. But there are a lot mm -hmm. of things in this book that one could look at and say, well, that's, that's a beautiful animal or that's an attractive animal. But looks can be deceiving, so that very attractive animal can be very dangerous. What are some other examples of things that might look harmless but aren't? There are a few um, sea creatures that I think are, are beautiful. One of them is actually a sea slug, and which sounds terrible, but its nickname is the Blue Angel. And it is royal blue. It has feathery appendages. It really does look like an angel as it floats through the water. And it is horrifically toxic. Uh, if you touch it, it has stinging cells that will uh, cause a very, very painful sting. Um, and another one that I, I thought was very interesting is a shrimp. It's called the mantis shrimp. Um, it's pretty small. It's about four inches long every color of the rainbow, just, just beautiful to look at. And its defensive mechanism is to use its claws to punch a predator that comes too close, which doesn't sound bad until you consider that their punch is strong enough that it can break glass. So, you know, to have something that's four inches long that can break glass is, uh, that was very eye-opening for me also. <laughs> Another unexpected dangerous animal that I didn't expect to see in this book are cats. And uh, I, I guess, again, it depends on how you define dangerous, but tell us more about why cats are dangerous and made it into the book. Um, cats are predators. And as far as predators go, they are good ones. Um, and house cats are better than some of their larger cousins at the hunt. Um, most house cats have a successful hunt about 30% of the time. Lions and tigers, maybe 10%, 15. Um, so that's one reason we included house cats. There is another cat called the black-footed cat that is successful 50% of the time. Um, that's a desert-dwelling animal, though. But yeah, cats, cats are very good at what they do. <laughs> One thing that's in this book that uh, not everyone's aware of, but uh, the book points out, hey, dragons are we real. In this case, it's the Komodo dragon. Tell us about it. Um, the Komodo dragon is the world's largest lizard. They can get to be about 10 feet in length and weigh in at about 300 pounds. Um, they have very long, sharp claws. They have venomous saliva. And they have teeth that are 
adapted to, to drive that saliva into their prey. Um, and they are also what we call an ambush hunter, where they hide, right, and wait for an animal to come by, and then they take it out with with one go. They use every weapon at their disposal, and I don't, I can't remember their kill success rate, but it, it's very, very high. Now, in this book, you cover dangerous creatures on land and at sea, in the water. Do you have a sense of where it is more dangerous to encounter these creatures in terms of in the water or on the land? I would argue that um, for this book, definitely the land. They, um, again, we define deadly with what adaptations do they have? Um, Are they, you know, talons, teeth, beaks, claws? Is it venom? Um, and just the the number of insects and reptiles and amphibians that are out there, and those are land dwelling animals. That most of them are land dwelling animals that have all of those tools at their disposal. Definitely land. This book is geared toward children. I know that part of your mission is to connect children with science and with you know how science applies to their everyday lives. What advice would you have for parents? who want to encourage their children's interest in science, nature, et cetera? My, um, I think my favorite piece of advice that someone gave to me once was, you know, kids are natural scientists. They ask why all the time, especially when they're very little. As they get older, turn that around on them. Ask them, why do you think this happens? Why is this happening? And it, and it you know, anything in the natural world, why is, you know, the tomato red. <laughs> Why is that weed growing there? And if you don't know the answer, you still have that opportunity to find that out together. And I really think that that keeps that fire of curiosity burning, which is so important. The book is Deadliest Animals on the Planet from National Geographic Kids. It was researched and written by Jennifer Samansky. Jennifer, thank you for talking with me today. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me on. Now, if you'd like to purchase Deadliest Animals on the Planet, I placed a link for you in the description below. Well, thank you for watching this edition of the Kids Bookshelf. And if you'd like to see more videos about children's books and their authors, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell to be notified about future programs. I'm Dan Skinner. Until next time, keep sharing the gift of reading.